Hello and welcome back to the workshop series where we take a deep dive into the features of Dune 3. This episode is all about bass and we're going to look at five different ways we can shape bass using a range of features in Dune 3. The five techniques that we're going to look at specifically today are using the filters, using the filter effects, using distortion with an MSEG and using chorus and reverb. If you have missed any of the previous episodes in this workshop series you can see the playlist link on screen now and there's also a link in the description. Let's get started and jump straight into the video. We're just going to make a couple of tweaks before we get started on looking at the filters. I'm going to start with the semitones. I'm going to bring this down one octave. That is minus 12 because the MIDI position is a little bit high up in the track. I'm going to hit reset so we have an initial phase point so we get the same starting point every time. And as a bonus tip, if you want to control the phase position, we can do this in the mod matrix by choosing the constant in the source. Then the destination can be the oscillator phase and then we can choose a phase position and keep it locked in. And starting with the filters, we're going to use a Saturn 24 dB. This is the filter of choice today. It's one of my favorites, but I encourage you to try other filters and see what results you can get. You can see reducing the cutoff to zero using the envelope mount to then control the filter opening in a specific shape and you can see I've just used the decay rate there to bring out some more of the sound. I've also used the release on the amp envelope just to stop the clicks that were happening at the end of each bass hit. We can also use two filters at once so if we wanted to control the low end for example we could use a 12 dB bandpass. Let's bring this down to zero. And we can control the positioning of the bass using a bandpass. We could use a high pass to control the lows in the sound. And another great way to control low end if you don't want to use a secondary filter is using the resonance. It just helps control the lower boom of the sound and it's a good way just to clean it up a little bit without having to go through any external effects or anything in the effects bus. And finally to give the sound a little bit more meat we can use the drive here to add some extra harmonics and just drive the filter a little bit harder. I think around that 19% mark sounds really nice and it's not too much but it adds a little bit of flavour to the sound and that's all done within the filter section. From that we can see that the filtering is actually a really important part of bass design. We can control the shape of it using the filter envelope and we can also control things like the resonance to remove a bit of low end and control that and use a bit of drive to add harmonics. Second filters to control low end or add extra content to the sound we can actually position it in different places using different filter types which then leads me on to the filter effects. The filter effects in Dune 3 are exceptionally powerful when it comes to sound design. It cuts out a lot of the hassle that you have to do later on, especially if it has to come third party in your effects chain. We can actually do it straight inside the filters before we even get to the effects buses. And the effects on hand are things like light distortion all the way through to many different filter types. So you can have essentially three filters depending on how you want to route it. So if you wanted these to be rooted in order, so filter one, two, and then you could class this as filter three if you wanted to use a notch filter, for example, we can change the route in here so that the effects come last. So we have filter one, two, and then the effects. So we have a chain of filtering, but we're gonna take a look at these routing options in a second. We're just gonna have a brief overview once we've got the effects set up. For this demo, we're gonna choose the phaser. Now this is gonna throw our bass into a more deep house territory. So before it was probably more on the lines of some sort of like progressive house, it's more laid back electronic music. This is now gonna throw it into a very deep territory and it's gonna sound like the bass is underneath the kick and then we can put it on the top. It's gonna to sound a bit springy and you're gonna hear all the different variants that it's gonna go through when I dial in the amount. Now we're in a bit of deep house territory there. A bit more bouncy and a little bit more froggy. That is the words that are coming to the mind.
So I've turned that back down to where it sounds like the bass is underneath the kick, giving us some deep house vibes. And with some of the effects, we get extra controls, like this one has a low pass. So I'm going to just take out some of the top end of that springiness. This nicely leads on to the routing options. So we've got filter one effects and filter two as our default positioning, but we can have the effects at the beginning or we can have the effects at the end. Then we have two parallel options as well. So we can have the filters working in parallel into the effects or vice versa, the effects going into filters one and two at the same time. We're just going to look at the series ones today and I'm going to show you how we can control the shape of this by feeding the effects last or first. So I advise that you listen to this on headphones so you can hear the true capabilities of this. I'm going to turn the resonance up on the second filter and move the cutoff into a position where we get a lot of boom out of our bass. We can change the position of the effects filter and where the filters actually land in the chain. And you're going to hear a drastic difference when we put the effects at the end as opposed to in the middle or at the beginning. We can hear on this one, it sounds a little bit more controlled. The boom is still there, but it's not as vibrant. And you can hear this routing option gives a lot more undertone onto the bass and makes it sound even lower and deeper than what it is. So depending on what you're trying to do, we can actually get more weight out of our basses by adding a little bit of resonance and then putting the effects at the end. Obviously we're using a phaser in this instance, it'll be different for different effects, but this is a good way to control because then we can now dial back the resonance on this filter and get a nice balance. And you can see that the effects give us some more avenues to explore with our sound design directly in the filters before we've even moved on to the effects buses. Now we can move on to the effects buses and we're going to start with distortion. I'm going to activate the distortion and we're going to choose saturation and this is going to sound a little bit flappy and uncontrolled and it's probably going to sound really nasty but let's have a listen first. Now let's say that we want to add some of this drive, say 16% of that, but we want to add it in a controlled way. We don't want to just add drive and let it just go loose on the sound design. We can actually control this using an MSEG. We could reuse the filter envelope, but I want to be a little bit more precise and an MSEG is going to give me that option. Here in the MSEG, we can create two notes just like this. It doesn't matter how far it reaches over, just create a bit of a bend in there and that is going to act as our decay rate. And we can control this using the rate here if we want to. Back on the effects bus, we can right click drive, modulate with and hit MSEG1. And you can see in the mod matrix, we've got MSEG1 controlling the effects one distortion drive, which is correct. And it populated that to plus 10, but I've just returned it to zero so we can increase it to the level that we want. And now we've got a nice controlled addition of saturation drive using the shape of the MSEG. Now, if it's a little bit too much still, we can speed up the rate so the decay rate happens a lot faster. That is just the same as turning the decay up and down on the filter. But for this demo, that is absolutely fine. It adds a little bit of punch and transient to the sound. Okay, so up to this point, we've had a lot of options with shaping the sound using the filters, the built-in effects, using saturation and distortion. But now we're going to add a little bit of pizzazz into the sound by using some chorus and some reverb. We're going to use them independently so you can hear exactly what they're doing, but this is going to give us some width into our sound design. So activating chorus, we're going to leave it on the single mode. And as you know, chorus is a very fast delay. So we're going to get lots of stereo width out of this straight away as soon as we hit play. Now that sounds great just on its own and feel free, you can just use it as it is, but we can control the lows and the highs in here as well as the feedback and the depth are the main things that I would focus on.
really you can see the depth as controlling the width of the sound. The more depth there is, the more wide the sound gets. A little bit more detuned at the same time. You can hear it gets a little bit more erratic with a faster rate, so keeping it at a slower rate is going to give you a better option. However, if you're looking to have a little bit of movement in your bass, we could use something like the JP Chorus, for example. You can hear we get some nice results from there, but it does add a little bit of boominess to the sound, so you probably have to control that with a bit of EQ after or before, just to make sure that the low end stays controlled. And finally, we have reverb. The type that we're going to use today is the slap back hall. And the main thing that you'll want to control here is time. Reduce the width. Reduce the mix. And you can hear from that we get a nice space for the bass to operate in. It's not intrusive and it just adds a little bit of extra texture and gives character to the sound. But where the most fun comes from using the slapback hall, in my opinion, is using the pre delay but in sync mode. But instead of using pre-delay in milliseconds, we can click the sync button and use time bases instead. So we can use dotted eighths or dotted quarter notes or triplet quarter notes. And this is going to give us a new edge on the sound design. And the faster the pre-delay, you can hear that it goes back to how it sounded before we started messing around with pre-delay, but at the lower value, especially those quarter note triplets, we get some really interesting after shouts from the bass. And there we have it. That brings us to the end of the June 3 workshop episode number three. Hopefully you've got something to take away from this video and incorporate it into your own sound design and come up with some interesting ideas. And before we finish, if you don't want to miss any future workshop videos, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified soon as those drop each month. And if you have any questions about what you've seen in today's video, please let us know down in the comments. So thank you very much for watching. I've been Demis Helen and I will see you all in the next video.